welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of cloud computing. Today, my guest is from EMC. We have Ted Newman. Ted is the Senior Director of Cloud and Virtual Data Services at the company. So, Ted, welcome to the show today. Thanks very much, Rich. Hey, it's my pleasure. So, you know, I brought your slides up. We're here to talk about realizing converged infrastructure. Can you tell us more about that? Certainly, and uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I appreciate it. I wanted to share with uh, with you and, and your listeners today a little bit of information regarding EMC uh, Consulting's approach to helping our customers realize uh, converged infrastructure strategy uh, through a, a, a series of uh, both strategic and tactical steps that uh, CIOs and uh, and IT should be taking today. So next slide. Uh, to start, a little bit about EMC Consulting. Uh, we're the leading global information consultancy uh, with revenues last year of about $600 million. And uh, we have 2,000 associates worldwide who are focused on helping our customers realize uh, value uh, out of their information. Uh, we're supported by EMC's global services organization with a further 12,000 professionals worldwide, and, and we focus our support uh, around the global Fortune 1000 companies. So we're not trying to solve every problem that everyone has, but rather we're working with those customers who have uh, a large uh, number of EMC's products across our very diverse portfolio, and we're helping them integrate the, those products together to uh, drive additional value out of their information, realize uh, more business value and benefits. And to that end, uh, we have been focusing with them uh, more recently around converging infrastructure and realizing benefits uh, through developing private and hybrid cloud architectures within their environments. Next. So, why is this important for CIOs and uh, business stakeholders today? What we have seen is that the business is demanding IT change and evolve to keep up with them. As more companies and enterprises have become enabled via technology in new ways to provide services and outreach to their customers, we are seeing that business agility is directly tied to IT agility. And the business is changing faster than IT is today. Uh, so they're, they're extending uh, new services and capabilities uh, out to their customers delivered via traditional uh, IT methods. And so the business has new IT alternatives in the form of internally in, in you know, potentially using uh, a, a new endpoint rather than you know their corporate desktop. There's mobile phones and uh, tablet computers and smartphones, et cetera. They're also consuming um, public cloud uh, uh, services like maybe Salesforce.com or they're using a Gmail address or potentially consuming Google Apps or Amazon Web Services. The business is already beginning to consume public cloud resources, uh, whether IT knows it or not. And then we're also seeing that uh, technology convergence is accelerating, and we've led the way around this through our uh, virtual uh, computing environment coalition uh, developing the vBlock, and uh, we continue to see uh, convergence both from an endpoint perspective as well as uh, within the, the network area, um, you know, converged communications and that sort of thing. Next. What this means is that uh, IT really needs to transform as, as we move from being a, a, a technology provider to a service provider. Currently, you know, business units perceive IT in a business as usual uh, function as inhibiting innovation. That's a perception. It may not necessarily be the case, but uh, uh, in talking with business stakeholders, they believe that uh, IT is slowing them down a little bit. They're not able to provision new development environments or QA environments, that sort of thing, so they are slowing down the time to market. 
these new business initiatives are driving application modernization. Uh, people want to get off of the mainframe or want to move into new, more flexible, more agile technologies. And, and, and there could, as I mentioned, already be some cloud sprawl occurring within the business today uh, because it, we hire smart people within, in, into the business, engineers, scientists, analysts, etc. And those people tend to have a way of uh, getting what they need, even if uh, IT may not be providing that. So they could be skirting firewalls, they could be um, using uh, alternative devices in the environment, et cetera. So uh, IT might already be experiencing cloud sprawl. And finally, what we need to focus on as IT practitioners is that the service catalog and the reference architecture are our control points. Via a well-defined service catalog that is initiated through a conversation with the business asking them what it is that they really want, we can provide what looks to be almost limitless uh, flexibility on the front end via the service catalog and a self-service portal that funnels uh, and normalizes those service requests into very strictly defined reference architectures that allow us to drive cost savings and, and, and even innovation in our environment. Next slide. So what's working? Uh, how, how are uh, companies being successful today? Well, we're, we're seeing that the more clearly you can align yourself to the business needs, uh, the, the, the better your traction you're getting, the easier it is to get the business to line up to, to help you with your initiatives. The old message uh, for IT around virtualization was one about uh, uh, consolidation for the most part. You know, for the last five years, I think that we have conflated uh, virtualization and consolidation and the message to the business that I'm going to take your application which isn't consuming the resources of the hardware that it's sitting on and take your mission critical application that you know and love and, and which is vital to your business process and consolidate that onto another piece of hardware with 39 other applications isn't a message that a lot of business stakeholders are lining up to. But if you could talk about improving provisioning time and increasing availability and performance and those sorts of things, aligning to the business's needs, that's a message that they can buy into. Um, the more you can adhere to some standards, that is to drive some reference architectures, potentially even building a platform as a service within your environment to help your developers, uh, the, the more the business will buy off as well. You need to be constantly communicating. IT transformation is as much about uh, the marketing as it is about technology. So you need to understand uh, what metrics uh, are important to the business and be communicating to them in those terms. You want to have some strong governance. You want to have a routine way of providing information and feedback to stakeholders that is customed and, tailor and tailored to them. And finally, this needs to be pragmatic. New IT needs to run in parallel with uh, the business as usual, and uh, you need to get those early wins to drive momentum. You want the flywheel effect. It's going to be difficult at first, but with each success, it gets easier and easier. Next. We define IT transformation as an enterprise program involving not just the technology, but also the policies and processes uh, that the organization utilizes to ensure that the services are being delivered well and uh, at, at the best cost with uh, high levels of compliance. Uh, and it has to involve the business right from the outset. The goal of IT transformation isn't to roll out new technologies, but rather to drive efficiency, agility, and growth. Next. Transformed IT provides, as I mentioned, a lot of flexibility on the front end to your users' community, to those consumers, built on top of new application platforms that might be delivered via a number of different uh, delivery methodologies, either within the private cloud or the public cloud or an automated hybrid cloud infrastructure. And wrapped around all of this is orchestration and security so that no matter where your service is being delivered from, it is 
provisioned, monitored, and reported on in the same fashion. And that is what gives uh, the business the confidence that IT can deliver on their needs. Next, please. It's a journey. It's, it's not a light switch. And uh, while many of these uh, phases might run in parallel and, and, and run iteratively, the, the idea is to be successful, you're going to start with some rationalization and standardization. Um, and, and most organizations start within their IT production environment with a real infrastructure focus. And then from there, move into modernization, layering in automation into your environment, begin to consume some new services, um, et cetera. And finally, what we want to drive is choice and orchestration. Uh, oftentimes, we see organizations uh, have a, a stutter at the beginning of this kind of a program because they jump right to automation and orchestration, and they try to uh, roll that out broadly across all of the infrastructure that they have in place. What uh, we recommend is we start with a rationalization of what services should IT be offering, what is the business really looking to consume, defining those in a service catalog and publishing them, and allowing users to vote with their clicks as to what the priority should be around automation and orchestration. Uh, you know, some people refer to that as cloud washing a little bit, but the more that you can solve the business problem, which is around the consumption of services and the management and reporting of uh, those services as services rather than a collection of components, the more that they buy into this overall program and give you their support and actually move more of their application portfolio into this new offering. Next slide. So to that end, um, it, we often begin with consolidation and virtualization and standardization, um, moving from dedicated vertical stacks uh, focused on particular applications or potentially even business lines to dynamic pools of compute and storage. This is that private cloud, highly virtualized environment uh, that we're looking to build off of. And this provides a lot of the cost savings that then funds um, the next phases of work. Ne next slide. The basis for this is a, a, a cloud infrastructure platform. You need to have a comprehensive approach as you move into this target architecture that includes not just the technology itself, but the processes that allow you to operate it successfully and an alignment of the roles for your people so that your organization reflects the reality of this new infrastructure. The, the concept is that not only do you need to have a, a cloud-optimized infrastructure, but you need a cloud-optimized organization and processes to realize that full benefit. And this is where you begin to do that automation and orchestration. Next, please. This means that IT needs to develop some new roles. Um, traditionally, we are very focused on support and the technologies. and a renaissance over the course of the last five years has been in thinking about things in terms of platforms and the applications that they support. Well, the, the, the next iteration of this evolution is really focused on services and client engagement. We as IT practitioners need to be thinking about how do we work with the business to understand what services we need to develop and offer and engage with them to ensure that we understand what their requirements are, not just from a technology perspective, but also how these services support their business, support the processes, and in the end, help them deliver value for their customers. Next. To do this, EMC has developed a, a converged infrastructure approach around the V-Block that starts with the, the activation of the actual infrastructure itself and the integration of it into your environment, and then building out those initial service blueprints or service offerings in a catalog via a portal that can be consumed, some of which will be consumed in a self-service manner, and then some will be consumed uh, via the traditional IT change and configuration management processes. That's where the integration into those operational processes and tools, some of which will be new and specific to the VBlock, some will be an integration into existing uh, IT service management platforms takes place. 
And then finally, when this environment is stood up, configured, and ready to go, and, and net new uh, uh, services are being offered on top of it, uh, to realize the full value and potential associated with the vBlock, we'll begin helping our customers migrate their application workloads onto this new platform and, and really drive up uh, both the utilization of that, of that new uh, architecture as well as the cost benefit and value delivered off of that platform. Next. I'd just like to very quickly um, talk about uh, some successes that our customers have had in, in this sort of a transformation. And, and one is a, a global credit card firm that uh, had a new business initiative that really needed to be highly scalable and very elastic, uh, delivered globally, um, and, and in a self-service, self-provisioning manner. Um, and, and to do that, they, they knew that within the first 18 months, they were going to have to scale to serve millions of users uh, located all over the globe with some automated operations. And EMC helped them deploy this architecture within 10 weeks on top of a, a VCE vBlock. And it delivered a fully automated platform as a service uh, based on vFabric uh, and, and vCloud and the, v, the vBlock to really develop a cutting edge initiative that um, was first in their market and allowed them to you know, drive additional revenue streams, all while deploying this new uh, highly uh, technical and, and leading edge environment, 60% uh, faster than they were able to deploy in their legacy environment. Um, so there was a lot of success associated with that. Next slide, please. We have several more examples uh, that, that you can learn about um, via emc.com, including some white papers outlining our perspective on cloud optimization and cloud trust and uh, some thought leadership uh, videos from our executives as well as, uh, as RSA. And uh, you know, we invite you to, to learn more about how EMC delivers value for your converged infrastructure. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I certainly appreciate your time and, and would look forward to, uh, to interacting with you more via my blog at uh, mrinfrastructure.com or via Twitter um, where I can be reached at BCTO. So thanks for the time today, Rich. Well, thanks for that, Ted. So a question about the vBlock for our listeners that might not be familiar with it. What essentially is, is the vBlock um, device? Certainly, the, the, the vBlock is a converged infrastructure uh, platform, if you will, that is developed um, by EMC, Cisco, and VMware. It's a highly customized and, uh, and configured operating environment, purpose-built for uh, virtualized workloads that integrates uh, Cisco's UCS and Nexus hardware with uh, EMC's VNX and VMAX, uh, tailor-built for running vSphere workloads. Uh, and, and it comes in a number of uh, sizes and configurations, but the concept is it gives you a, a blockwise approach to building out uh, virtual workload capabilities in your data center um, uh, in, in, in that's easy to scale both uh, vertically and horizontally. Oh, terrific. So, um, well, let's talk a little bit about what's driving this move towards the converged infrastructure. Um, you know, in the beginning, you talked about how business is changing faster than IT. And so it wasn't a bunch of people saying, boy, wasn't it, wouldn't it be nice if we had converged infrastructure? Was it, or was it more of a, a business need that is moving the industry towards this? That's a great question, Rich. And, and, and what, what we've seen and what we've heard for, from our customers is that because the pace of business is so fast, because things are changing so much in the marketplace, and consumers are really demanding new services from the enterprise, um, the non-recurring engineering that takes place within IT organizations around 
ensuring you know which NIC works with which firmware, works with which operating system level, works with you know which new server in the environment, et cetera, et cetera. That takes place on a quarterly basis. Uh, was not providing value and was really slowing up the time to market for new services. So uh, EMC and our partners worked together to develop this architecture uh, utilizing converged infrastructure that allowed organizations to very quickly stand up new capacity and make it available uh, via virtualized workloads for new applications, new services, et cetera, without uh, the IT organization needing to worry about all of that non-recurring engineering that takes place to ensure that they're able to deliver services. Yeah. So, Ted, you know, I was listening carefully, and you didn't mention the word storage till slide nine today. Um, do you think, it, is that uh, kind of a surprise when you sit down with, with clients to talk about their needs, that you're not just pushing, um, you know, storage devices, that you're helping them build this more holistic kind of uh, solution? Unfortunately, uh, Rich, it's, it's a great point. It is still a surprise for yeah. many of our customers that we have these capabilities. But the the fact is that as EMC has transformed over the last ten years, and our product portfolio has greatly expanded into you know areas like in, intelligent information and uh, and and backup and recovery and and, and all of the various and, and incredible products that we have in our portfolio now. We had to develop consulting capabilities in order to help our customers realize the, that value. Uh, so, you know, it, it is a new EMC, really. And I think if you've watched our, our overall messaging uh, out to the marketplace and to our customers, we've moved from being about, uh, you know, storage and intelligent information to, you know, last year was the journey to the cloud, and this year we're really talking about helping customers realize IT transformation. So kind of a wrap-up question here, Ted. You know, I came from Sun Microsystems, and being part of that for 10 years, we always felt like our IT was in the Stone Age, and yet we were selling the, the cutting edge uh, out to clients. Um, you know, you work with these Fortune 1000 companies. Uh, do you think, do they feel like they're leading the way, or are they catching up? Uh, it, it's interesting. There's really a, a spectrum, but uh, for, for the most part, what we've seen is a, is a little bit, you know, we, we had to experience this with an EMC. It's a, kind of the cobbler's children, right? We're always the last to get shoes, but we, we turned that around with an EMC such that uh, we're drinking our own champagne first and really proving out uh, uh, solutions and capabilities and taking those to the market for, for our customers to consume. But I would say that the Fortune 1000, uh, you, you really get one of two reactions, right? One, one is uh, there are a number of leaders out there, and they have identified that link between business agility and IT agility, and so they're constantly pushing ahead in order to meet, uh, meet that business demand. I would say a, a lot of uh, the IT shops out there feel like they're trying to catch up, uh, that uh, the business stakeholders have a perception that cloud and cloud technologies really provide the answer for uh, the, the issues that they see with IT. And, and, and whether that may be reality or not, that's a perception that they have, and so the IT is always trying to keep up with the business. Sure. All right, Ted. Well, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show today. Hey, thanks for the opportunity and, and your listeners' time, and, uh, and, and I hope to do this again soon. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of cloud computing.